left to go. Iowa is really up against it, as you can see, trailing Iowa State by 12 points as they get ready to try to go ahead and win this team championship. With me now, our expert commentator, former NCAA champion Mark Lieberman. And Mark, uh, it's going to be very difficult for Iowa to go ahead and fulfill the task ahead of it. Dan Gable's going to have his hands full. He'll need a real miracle to pull this one out. He's got three gentlemen left in the finals. He needs victories from all three to remain in contention for that 10th consecutive national championship. And of course, two of those bouts are against Cross State, Iowa State, uh, a rival that Dan knows much about, and he needs victories in both of those. Indeed, the very first match we'll see is a head-to-head -head matchup between a Hawkeye and a wrestler from Iowa State. Brad Penrith of Iowa against Bill Kelly of Iowa State at 126 pounds. Now, the first time today that you see an Iowa State wrestler win a match, then the competition for the team championship is over. So Iowa State will have clinched as soon as that takes place. However, if Iowa keeps winning, it may in fact turn out the Hawkeyes' way. And now the beginning of the three periods in an amateur wrestling match. The first period, three minutes. Each of the following two periods, two minutes apiece. There are several basic ways to score in wrestling. We'll pick them up as we go along, but that is Penrith in the black singlet and in the red singlet, Bill Kelly of Iowa State. Penrith is a very aggressive takedown artist. However, his one previous encounter with Kelly, he lost five to two. So he's coming out to get some revenge as well as to keep his team in the running for the national championship. Go, get to work, get to work, let's go. Right and now the two wrestlers feeling each other out just a little bit. You mentioned, of course, Kelly's one win over Penrith during the course of the season. Penrith sat out the first semester with eligibility problems. Also wrestled most of the season at 134 pounds and then came down to 126 for this competition. And that was a tough weight loss for him. He's got to be a big 126 pounder. Here he is in on a single leg, trying to convert the takedown, trying to bring his opponent to the mat, and he gets it. That's two points. So a 2 nothing lead now for Brad Penrith. That's one of the most basic ways of scoring in wrestling, two points for a takedown. Now, if Kelly can escape from the disadvantage in which he is now held, he will have regained one point, and it will then be 2-1. to one. Penrith is riding with his legs, using his legs, looking to get back points. Trying to get back points. And then the go. reference by the term back points is to the Keep scoring working. which go, can result from a near fall. If Penrith can get Kelly into a position where he has not yet pinned him but has him close to a pin, he could get a one or two point near fall. That was a st stalemate situation. There's Coach Dan Gable watching, obviously knowing he needs every victory, every win from his wrestlers in order to maintain his quest for a 10th consecutive championship. Frank Gifford mentioned in the studio that he covered Gable during his remarkable run to a gold medal at the Munich Olympic Games in 1972. Penrith can't hold Kelly down. Kelly gets up and gets one point for an escape. So that is the standard exchange. Two to one, Penrith leading. And now they return to what is called a neutral relationship with one another. Neither wrestler in the advantage. Again, Penrith in on a single leg. He's a tenacious wrestler. He's very, very aggressive. Kelly is an Iowa State senior from Chicago Ridge, Illinois. Penrith, a junior at Iowa from Windsor, New York. Penrith is the defending champion in the competition. He won it a year ago. Keep it going. Kelly knows that he needs to get a takedown in this first period if he's going to maintain his domination over Penrith. Remember, he beat him once before. So he's looking to do it again now when it counts. And Kelly believes that he has never wrestled up to his full potential in an NCAA tournament. So he's more determined than ever to win a championship in this, his last shot at one. It's, it's awful tough for him to be out here this last time. There's a lot of pressure on him, especially with his team trying to win their first NCAA title in so many years. Again, Penrith in on a single leg. So we come to the end of a first period, which has been pretty evenly contested. We are back in College Park, Maryland, and just beginning the second of the three periods in this match at 126 pounds for a national individual wrestling championship between the man in red, Bill Kelly of Iowa State, and in black, Brad Penrith of Iowa, the defending champion in the weight class. Kelly is favored, though Penrith is the defending champion. Oh, no. Penrith is in the top oh. position. 
and he will try to work to turn his opponents back to the mat. If he can get that back to the mat, he can earn two or three points for a near fall. Kelly, on the other hand, obviously has to get out from under there so he can get his own offense going. The voice you will hear from time to time is that of referee Dave Frisch, a land surveyor from Colorado Springs, Colorado, as he talks to the two wrestlers. The match was stopped there because of a potentially dangerous hold. Anytime there's a possible injury to any of these athletes, of course, the official will jump in and stop the battle. And Helly up on his feet, gets a one-point escape. So that ties the match up at two apiece. One takedown for Penrith, worth two points, and Kelly now having escaped twice after having begun the second period in the under position with Penrith in the advantage. You see that quickness of Penrith in on the single leg here. He's known as the Flea. His nickname is the Flea because of that quickness. He's so, so accurate, so tough, getting in there on a single leg that people just can't stop him. Now he's got to convert it to score a takedown. The official stops the bout. That means stalemate. He didn't feel anything was going to happen. There's there is the head coach of Iowa State, as you got ready to point out, Mark. Jim Gibbons, 24 years old, and only his second year as head coach, and one of the youngest, if not indeed the youngest, coach in any NCAA sport at a major school. And what an opportunity for him in this in this second year of his reign to be the, the reign of Dan Gable, his cross-state rival, to win an NCAA title. It's quite an accomplishment if he can pull it off. As we mentioned moments ago, referee Dave Frisch carrying a wireless microphone, so you will hear his voice from time to time. Both wrestlers need a takedown now. They've got to get on the board. They can establish some control of the bout. Score is all tied up at two apiece. And only 12 seconds remaining in the second period Let's Go. as they continue to wrestle Let's a standoff. Go. Before this match, we talked to Bill Kelly of Iowa State about the experience of wrestling as a favorite against a defending champion. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that belongs to me, so uh, I think I was one of the few that beat him, and I've been sitting around for three years watching All-Americans and National Champs that I have have beaten in the past, and kind of different when you're looking down from upstairs without anything in your hand, so I have a goal in my mind, and as far as I'm concerned, I have to feel that I'm the best to go out and it, it doesn't bother me that he's returning national champion. I guess I prefer it that way. Kelly begins period three with the advantage. Now Penrith tries to escape to take a 3-2 lead. Work up, work up. As of the moment, the man in green, which is Brad Penrith, has racked up more than one minute of advantage time. Time spent in the advantage over his opponent and now it's less than a minute. If it winds up at more than a minute at the end of the match, that's another point which will be added to the wrestler who controls it. But right now, we are in a 2-2 match, and if Bill Kelly of Iowa State wins, he will wrap up a team championship for Iowa State, snapping the nine-year streak of Dan Gable in Iowa. If Brad Penrith of Iowa can win, then the Hawkeyes will still be alive. Penrith knows he's got to get his offense going. He's got to get that one-point escape. Now, there's an interesting call. Billy Kelly was called for stalling. When he's behind his opponent up on their feet, he's got to bring him back down to the mat. The official felt he wasn't being aggressive enough and didn't do that, so he gets a warning. Now, Jim, the next time, that will cost him a point, and, of course, that's Eight crucial. Point. There's a no one point, point that time, and there is the one-point escape, as you pointed out, for Penrith, and it's now 3-2. So many times in these final matches, it comes down to the takedown in the last period. Both these wrestlers are competent. You'd have to give the edge to Penrith, even though he's behind, he's ahead. But, but you need, he needs that edge because he's wrestled for Dan Gable so intensely, and Gable was so good on his feet in the takedown position. Let's go, get to work, let's go, come on. 52 seconds to go. Penrith leading by one point in what has been a tentative match. A great shot, there's a two-point takedown. He's gonna pin him here. He's very, very close. Billy Kelly from Iowa State has the match locked up. He's holding his opponent on his back. He'll get three points, there's the fall. And there's the team championship for Iowa State. And there is Bill Kelly's wife as she responds to her husband's first NCAA championship in his senior year. Iowa State has its first title since 1977. Dan Gable's nine-year streak with the Iowa Hawkeyes is snapped. The Hawkeyes remain tied with the Yale golf team of the early century and the Southern Cal track team of the late 30s.
consecutive national championships. And all of those stories converge in the sudden and brilliant shot by Bill Kelly, which resulted in a pin. The senior from Chicago Ridge, Illinois, two-time champion of the Big Eight, always under his own expectations in this tournament, finally came through this year. And now he is with Mark Lieberman. It's a great win. Thanks. Congratulations, a great victory. Did you think you could pull it off when it was so close? Mark, I don't know. I just, I guess I was waiting for something. I, I knew I was going to try to shut off his flunk because he likes to scrap. And uh, I don't know. That's it, one of my moves. I kind of patented following, I guess, after a Schultz Torello match and uh, messing with it one day in practice. If it wasn't there. I just, I just forced it. I don't know. And it worked. A pin. Did you ever expect that you could pin him? Oh. Uh, I told my coach I get him on his back. I'm never letting him up. Great. What about the team score? You realize this match put Iowa State over the top and secured a national championship. <laughs> I'm, I'm too happy to think about it. Did you think Iowa State had the ability to, to beat Iowa at this time? Yeah, I, I figured we would somewhere along the line. We've been working all year really hard for it. It's paid off. Congratulations, Billy. All right. Thank you very much to Bill Kelly and congratulations again to him and all of the Iowa State Cyclones for a national championship which resulted from that one moment. Kelly holding Penrith and finally getting his shoulders to the mat for the pin which ended the nine-year run of the Iowa Hawkeyes on top of NCAA wrestling. There is 24-year-old Jim Gibbons and you know what happened at that moment as Gibbons leaped skyward out of his seat to celebrate in only his second year as head coach at Iowa State, a national championship for the Cyclones. They last won in 1977. Now, 10 years later, they've done it again. We'll be back with more. Jim Lapley with Mark Lieberman back live at College Park, Maryland. And you look at the team standings to this moment. The asterisk next to the Ohio, I mean the Iowa State total, indicates that the Cyclones had just clinched the national championship in NCAA wrestling for 1987. And having done so, have snapped Iowa's nine-year run at the top of the pack. We are now going to see the 150-pound match, another head-to-head -head matchup between Iowa State and Iowa. Tim Krieger, a sophomore from o uh, Iowa State, is favored against Jim Heffernan, a senior from Iowa, despite the fact that Heffernan is the defending champion in the competition. A year ago, Krieger came into the NCAA championships unbeaten, lost twice, wound up fifth, wants to erase that bad memory. And he told us a little bit earlier what he would regard as his optimum strategy at the start of this match. First period, I need a takedown. I definitely need to take him down. Um, but I, I got to keep my position, you know. I can't, I can't go into the second period three points down or anything like that, you know. I, I just got to stay in there mentally and maybe beat him up a little bit physically. You know, that's, that's important as far as, you know, mental too. Krieger, the sophomore from Mason City, Iowa, is in the red singlet, and Hefferman, the senior from North Olmsted, Ohio, in the black. Now Hefferman tries a leg. He tried a single leg shot. He's trying to strike oil there. He's trying to get points. He's, he has to bring his opponent to the mat under control, and they went off the edge. That black line on the outside of the mat, that's the edge of the mat. Once they cross that, of course, the referee blows the whistle and brings him back to the center. Now, Mark, Krieger reached down and bodily dragged Heffernan out of the circle. Can that be penalized? It sure can. If the official feels that it was an intentional effort to draw the, his opponent off the mat, the official will stop them, and, of course, there'll be a warning first, and then eventually there will be points awarded for his opponent. In 63 matches in Tim Krieger's college wrestling career, his only two losses took place at last year's NCAA tournament. You wonder about his mental stability as he goes into this match against a man who he has defeated this year. Again, Heffernan in on that leg. He's trying to convert. He's trying to bring his opponent down to the mat under control. Looking for the two-point takedown. Very important to score the first point. Very important to, to establish control and momentum.
momentum in the match. Well, you heard Krieger say in his interview that he himself felt he needed a takedown in period one. It has been Heffernan, however, who has been aggressive in going out after it. So far, no score in the match. Very quickly, the various general ways of scoring in a wrestling championship. I mentioned the two or three point near fall, one point for escape, two points for a reversal and two points for a takedown. A reversal when you go immediately from a position of being at a disadvantage, being under the control of the opponent, to reversing that and taking over control of your opponent. Jim Heffernan from Iowa has had a mental block against Iowa State wrestlers. He's never been able to beat one of them in a dual meet. Here he is again on a nice single leg down at the ankle, which will give him better control. Look at the way Krieger is fighting that, jumping up on him. Jim, that's what we talked about. The official felt that Krieger pulled Heffernan, Heffernan off the mat, and he warns him for stalling. If he does that again, it will cost him a point. And the point will be added to Heffernan's score. In a match which is so far 0-0, referee Darrell Henry is wearing a wireless microphone, so you'll be able to hear him if, in fact, he assesses that penalty. Tim Krieger is one of the brightest young college prospects, having been undefeated as a freshman, even though he had a disappointing season his, his freshman year. But here it is, his sophomore year, he's made it to the national finals against an opponent he's beaten before. He's gonna have to, he's gonna have to bring it home. It's gonna be a tough one for him. And we'll be back. And as we return for period two of the 150-pound national championship match between Jim Heffernan and Tim Krieger, Krieger scores a point for an escape and now leads in the match 1-0. In case you have just joined us, this is the second match we have covered here, the seventh of the day, in a competition in which just moments ago, Iowa State wrapped up the team championship on the strength of a big victory for Bill Kelly of Iowa State over Brad Penrith of Iowa at 126 pounds. Iowa's nine-year run as national wrestling champion has ended, and Iowa State assumes that championship role under the coaching of Jim Gibbons. That was a good look at Dan Gable, the man who coached Iowa to nine consecutive championships, and this year for only the second time in his 11-year coaching career, will be coaching a team that doesn't win the national title. Both these wrestlers are very physical, Jim. They're both shooting shots, they're both very aggressive, uh, but they're real strong kids. For, for 150 pounds, those are uh, two power-packed, muscle-packed bodies out there, and, and all that force coming together. Uh, there's gonna be some slipping and sliding as we go into the, to the later periods. We're in the middle, midway through the second period. As we get into the third period, it'll be tough for them to score points because, of course, they're so tight. That is Karen Krieger, mother of Tim Krieger from Mason City, Iowa. Her son was one of the most heavily recruited, if not the most heavily recruited, high school wrestlers in the country when he came out of high school two years ago and has done nothing to eliminate any of the excitement that surrounded his promise at that time. Oh, a little throw by, very close to the kick, and the off. Very close call. The Iowa fans didn't like that one at all, Jim. We have not seen a takedown in this match, Mark. Generally speaking, isn't it fair to say that the wrestler who can score takedowns most frequently is going to win 99% of all matches? Absolutely. And, and, Jim, when we get to the finals here like this, the wrestlers are so evenly matched sometimes that, that it's just a battle. There's a lot of action going on, a lot of wrestling, but it's tough to score points because they're just so doggone good. At the highest level, they are likely to have the most well-developed defensive skills. And that's what you're seeing here in a one-nothing match after two periods. One Back in College Park, Maryland, third period now underway. Tim Krieger leading Jim Heffernan, one-nothing. In what has been, needless to say, given that score, a defensive struggle. One minute, 35 seconds remaining in the match. Remember that, that Krieger has consistently beaten Heffernan in the past. And of course, he's got to be careful because he's got a stalling call already against him for pulling his opponent off the mat. He cannot back up at all. He's got to stay aggressive. And the officials are watching him closely. In two dual meets this year, Krieger defeated Heffernan 4-2 and 4-3. There's a point awarded. The official awarded a point. Oh, my error, he said, just back up to your feet. It was very close as to whether Krieger had pulled Jim Heffernan off the mat. Of course, that would be stalled. Heffernan back in on the single leg, trying very hard to convert. Trying to take his opponent down to the mat. Near the edge of the bout. Krieger leading 1-0, having scored the only point of the match on an escape in period two. It'll be interesting to see if any of the style changes now. The wrestlers may get a little desperate, and, and of course, Heffernan is going to have to score.
scorer. He has to force the action. Riding time's not a factor. Hefferman again in a single leg, over to a double. As long as, as Krieger has that arm hooked over, there's no point scored. There is a stalling call, Jim. And that's one point for Jim Heffernan, and that ties the score at 1-1. One one. There are Heffernan's parents from North Olmsted, Ohio. They're very happy to see the point awarded to their son. Now, it was a stalling penalty levied against Bill Kelly of Iowa State in the previous match, which seemed to motivate Kelly and send him forward to a pin of Brad Pender. We have 19 seconds left in the period. Now, Heffernan in on a deep single leg, and they're rolling around. He's got to establish control. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. What about, oh, he's got to bring him down to the mat. He's got to bring him down to the mat. Five, four. Off the mat. Off the mat. No point. The officials are conferring to see if they felt it was falling, running off the mat. Broke up. No point awarded, and we still have a 1-1 one, one tie. Not Gable's day. End of regulation time. We'll be back with overtime right after this. As we bring it back to College Park, Maryland, we are in the first of three one-minute overtime periods. And in this period, there has been no scoring. So the score in the match is at this moment 0-0 zero, zero in overtime. Once again, in the black singlet, that is Jim Heffernan of Iowa, the defending champion in this weight class, 150 pounds. And his opponent is the favored Tim Krieger of Iowa State. And the officials have just warned Tim Krieger for, for stalling, lack of activity as the first period ends. He is responsible to stay aggressive, and, and the officials won't hesitate to call him, especially considering the regulation bout where we saw Tim was not as aggressive as the officials wanted and got penalized for stalling. So there was no scoring in the first one-minute overtime period. Now they begin the second in the neutral position. You get the feeling that whoever can score a takedown, just one takedown, is going to win the match. These wrestlers are so equally matched, they've been so close so many times, and yet haven't been able to successfully score. There, Tim Krieger in on a single leg. He's got a body lock now, a bear hug around the body. His hands can be locked. He's got to bring his opponent to the mat under control. Not in great position. Very close now, he got that leg hooked in. Zero, zero. 30 seconds to go in the second overtime period. The last overtime period also one minute long. This has got to be very frustrating for the coaches. Gable looking for an upset here. Wants to avenge his team loss. And of course, Jim Gibbons looking for another national champion. Heffernan shooting, not real good, but, but Tim Krieger getting out of position. Heffernan has a brother in this tournament, John, who wrestled earlier and, and placed sixth in the NCAAs as a sophomore. As we see so often, wrestling can be a family sport. And now we get ready to begin the third one-minute overtime period. There has been no scoring in overtime. Each wrestler scored one point, one on an escape and the other on a warning in regulation. There have been no takedowns in the match. And if they should finish this overtime period still tied up, then, well, now a point has been awarded. That's an escape. Tim Krieger started on the bottom. He was able to stand up, and then Heffernan just let him go. So obviously Heffernan feels he can take him down. Well, he's going to have to now. The Iowa fans aren't happy with the way Krieger's wrestling. They want him to be more aggressive. And he has to be careful. If he's called for stalling, it'll cost him. 27 seconds remaining. Heffernan, the man in black, must take Krieger down. There was a stalling call, and that ties it up 1-1. One, one. Now, if they finish this period tied at one apiece, then the referees must examine a dozen different criteria in, in order to determine who has won the match. converting to a takedown, but he's pulled off the mat. I felt Tim Krieger pulled him off the mat. 
that there. I thought he could have been called. He's really wrestled a little bit of a controversial bout, not being as aggressive as he should. And they have wound up tied in overtime. Stay right on your colors. Don't move up on the point. Understand? Stay right on your colors. Stay with them. Now they must stay in the middle of the mat while the referee goes to the official score to determine who has won. Criterion number one, unsportsmanlike conduct, unlike criterion number two, most points were near falls, there were no near falls. Criterion number three, takedowns, there were no takedowns. Criterion number four, reversals, there were no reversals. Criterion number five, greater number of escapes. There were two escapes in the match, one by each wrestler. Criterion number six, time advantage, minimum 15 seconds. Neither wrestler had that big a time advantage. Red wins it, Red escapes. Red wins it. So victory for Iowa State's Tim Krieger in what was quite simply not a very active match. And again, it is not Dan Gable's day. We will be back here later for more action from the NCAA Wrestling Championship. In a minute, you'll be joining the world figure skating champions on tour. And we'll be taking you to that right after this word from our local station. So there, a look at the team standings, and we get ready to hear from our local stations along the line. And we bring you back live to College Park, Maryland, for the 177-pound match, third of three periods. Darrell Pope of Cal State Bakersfield leading 1-0. He is wearing the blue singlet and wrestling against Rico Ciparelli of Iowa. And now it's tied up 1-1 on an escape for Ciparelli. Neither wrestler has been able to score points on takedowns, although both have flopped around and tried real hard to bring it home. They just can't do it. They, they're so well matched again. Again, it's a national finals, and maybe they're a little bit tight. There's a nice shot by Rico Ciparelli. Very close. Very close to take. yet now they do score it they scored it too just at the end when he, he left the route he said two points for rico ciparelli and ciparelli jumps ahead three to one ciparelli a senior you see there at the university of iowa psychology major nicknamed the baltimore butcher he's from baltimore maryland and has quite a local following watching these championships here in college park but, but pope darrell pope is back in it he escapes right away that gives him about one minute left in the bout, and he's got to score a point because he's down three to two. Daryl Pope from Cal State Bakersfield. So Pope needs a takedown, trailing three two. Pope is the Division II champion. Division II champions are allowed to come on to this meet and compete here. Already, two other wrestlers from smaller universities have won championships today. One from the University of Pittsburgh Johnstown campus and another from Bloomsburg State. Pope trying to Let's join them and become the third small college wrestler to win a championship here at the big show. Out of bounds, both wrestlers going out of bounds. The official, there's Dan Gable. He obviously has got to give some good coaching right now. Ciparelli has got to control the bout, but not get taken down. He's got a one-point lead, ever so slim. Here's Pope back in on a single leg. Gable Chip might like just to see one of his wrestlers win a match. It's been a while since that happened. There's Pope, very close to the takedown. Ciparelli fighting it, very, very close. They're flopping all over the place. So close, two points for Rico Ciparelli. And that's gonna do it. Time running out, so Rico Ciparelli wins a championship at 177 pounds, and that'll make Dan Gable feel a little better on what has not been his day. The Hawkeyes of Iowa came in here having won nine consecutive NCAA team championships. Today they were shut out by Iowa State as the Cyclones ended that nine-year string and won the first title for their young coach, 24-year-old Jim Gibbons, and now Rico Ciparelli in the last match of the competition has closed out his senior year at Iowa with an NCAA title, and that will rub some salve in Gable's wound. Another look at the reaction of Dan Gable on what has not been the best day of his life to a victory which he surely wanted to leave just one little good taste in his mouth from this competition.
There once again a look at the final team standings as Iowa State won the title for the first time since 1977. We'll be back for a final word from College Park right after this. We're back in College Park with Iowa coach Dan Gable. Coach, that was a very special win for you there with Rico Ciparelli. Well, we needed something just to end this tournament on the right note, and that definitely was a heck of a flurry there, a wild one, I'll tell you. It's a good thing that Rico was in there because anybody else probably would have came up on the bottom. Hope really had him there, and I have to congratulate Rico for the heck of a situation there. How does it feel to have come into this, one that meant so much to go for your 10th and not have pulled it out? Well, you know, it's, it's disappointing from a team championship, but I, you know, it's more important to me to see guys win out there and represent themselves up to their ability. I don't think anybody came into this tournament on my team and didn't do the job that they're capable of doing from a putting out standpoint. I can't say enough about my kids in here, and I have to congratulate Iowa State University because, you know, I'm an all, I used to go there myself, and it's a great school, and I, you know, I'm glad that they won it. Congratulations, Dan. Back to you, Jim. Thanks a lot. Indeed, it was Gable's alma mater that knocked him off. Champions here today, Royce Alger, the winner at 167 pounds. He's from Iowa, Pete Yazo of Lehigh at 142. Carlton Hazelrig of Pitt Johnstown, the heavyweight. John Smith of Oklahoma State at 134 pounds. Ricky Bonomo of Bloomsburg State at 118 pounds. Bill Kelly of Iowa State at 126. Tim Krieger of Iowa State at 150. Stuart Carter of Iowa State at 158. Eric Volker of Iowa State at 190. And finally at 177, Rick Chipperelli uh, from Iowa. Now let's go back to New York and Frank Gifford. Frank.